Welcome to the Texas Go Radio Show. I'm your host, Matorius. This is part three of the 1879 live stream by Owen Benjamin. And then, and then when they, uh, and then when, uh, when it was time for me to like idol worship them, I wouldn't. And then they're like, oh, you're insane. I'm like, no, I, I like, look at the Joe Rogan thing that you guys all got to witness. I see Joe Rogan saying. Okay. So the way that he worded that, think about the Joe Rogan thing that you all got to witness. And then he's going to rewrite history. Probably. I don't know if y'all have ever uh, looked into um, personal eyewitnesses, like as far, as far as testimony is concerned. I've seen certain studies done on it to where they would be out in public and they would do something and then go and ask people that they know for sure witnessed what just happened. And we're talking about minutes later, not months, not years, but minutes later. And it's crazy the different things people got wrong within just a couple of minutes. And so it's kind of easy for people to um, subtly rewrite the memory that you have of certain things, especially whenever you have the bear goggles on. Some good stuff. I'm listening to his uh, podcast. I'm a fan of what he's doing. I do his, uh, I do his show. I'm pumped about it. He starts acting shady. He changes his mind on the moon landing. He's like getting weird. And so I start making fun of him for being short and everybody's like, Oh, you lost your fucking mind. I'm like, no, I genuinely liked him, and now I genuinely don't. Okay, so that was a very small, not really any detail, but it was still designed to make him look a little bit better than, well, a lot better than if you actually know exactly how that went down. There are tons of clips out there with him just yelling and cussing and talking so much crap, accusing uh, Joe Rogan of so many things. So it, it definitely didn't go down that way up to a, like years later. He had, he did that in 2023 streams about oh, uh, Joe Rogan, just being all sorts of things. Like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. You know, I am the noble savage. That's why, uh, that's why I had, uh, that's why. Whenever he said, I am the noble savage, somebody that I've talked to, that I've read certain comments by has said that they were there in the chat whenever he adopted the name Noble Savage. It was somebody else that made that comment and then he picked it up. He didn't even come up with the term Noble Savage for himself. Somebody recommended that for, I guess, for his comedy special, <clears throat> much like everything else. Big Bear, he took that from Vince Vaughn. Bear Troll, he took that from around the place that he grew up. Uh, the Blank Stole My Bike song. He took that from... There's so many people that came out with that before him. The first account, I think, is uh, 50 Cent. I named my last special that. And and so me and this guy that I used to work closely with, we're having some big laughs about that today, where he's like... He was like, so you have this binary that it's either family or gay. And I'm like, yes. And he's like, that's so fucking funny. He's like, but everyone here hates it. And I was like, it's, it's so funny after seven years, people are still talking about me, right? If I actually was the failure and the crazy person that they pretend I am, wouldn't they have forgotten about me by now? Okay, so this is a, another um, contortion of truth. Because sure, there are people still talking about him. I mean, for crying out loud, I do a lot of videos on this dude. But it's not because he is a successful comedian by any means necessary or by any means that by any stretch of the imagination is what I meant to say. No, it's because he's a psychotic, dangerous, predatorial cult leader who ran a investment scheme back in 2020 during a worldwide pandemic. And he's a very interesting specimen as far as the human condition is concerned, because you've never been able to see how a cult leader acts on a day-to-day -day basis because these live streams that he has they're not designed to be consumed by just anyone they're designed in order to control his cult there's a reason why he uses certain words there was a comment um i think it was yesterday 
And it was they they changed their words up, and I'm I apologize to this guy in the comment section. I, I said I'm sorry if you are being sincere, but he checked all of the bases for what Owen does. One, they talk down to you. They try to exert dominance by calling you something that is lower than them. He called the the guy that was talking to me called me his son, and he my father figure. Second alluded to the fact that I was a scorned (laughs) ex-lover. Two things that Owen does right out of the gate. And I can't remember what the third one was. Um, Talking down to scorned ex-lover. Yeah, I can't remember what the other one was. I don't even remember where I was going with that. Huh. Just lost to the hands of time. Just some... To some crazy person, why am I still being talked about in all their offices? And I'm telling you why, because my take on Taylor Swift is. Just think about what he's saying right now. He's quite literally using something that no one knows for sure to say, why am I, why am I still being talked about in their offices? Who's talking about him in any office? Why isn't there? He's been out of Hollywood for a long time. Okay, since 2015, 2016, with something like that. He keeps throwing back to people that he's talking. Why, why, why don't, why is there not anybody in Hollywood saying, hey, man, like, I like Owen. <laughs> people can. There's not a rule against it. It's been long enough, and it's actually kind of sad that he thinks that he's such a rebel that, that he's still not allowed to be talked about in Hollywood. <clears throat> it's almost as sad as him trying to paint the narrative that not one comedy club would allow him to perform. Even though, because of the Hollywood, the uh, the children trans thing is what he would say. Not one comedy club would allow him to perform because of the child trans thing. Even though, and this is factual, he was on one of the world's largest podcasts talking about it and the host of that large podcast agreed with him so he's got enough clout to be on the world's largest podcast talking about the thing that supposedly got him canceled and another very large comedian one of the largest podcasters agreed with him so how does that translate to not being able to get into any comedy club I don't think it does. Obviously accurate. A 34-year-old that's on the road to the hands of time, just some some crazy person. Why am I still being talked about in all their offices? And I'm telling you why, because my take on Taylor Swift is obviously accurate. A 34-year-old that's on the road 340 days a year that has like a history of being crazy without much of a maternal instinct why would someone worth a hundred million dollars want to settle down with her it makes no it's not heterosexual you know and the more people see it like uh where is it like i made this meme yesterday of uh travis kelsey screaming at little andy reed i'm fucking gay and it's like people all right. <laughs> On that note, this is the Texas Goat Radio Show, and I'm your host, Matorius. As always, till next time. <laughs>